Hey there! So, Twitter sentiment analysis. For those of you who already know what it is and why do we use it, skip a little ahead. For others, let's have a brief intro before we begin the more fun practical part. What is Twitter sentiment analysis? As the name suggests, it's analysis of the sentiments shown on Twitter as tweets. What does it basically mean? People rate emotions as tweets about different topics on Twitter. If we analyze these sentiments of people towards a particular topic, important information can be derived. The formal definition of Twitter sentiment analysis is, it is the process of determining the emotional tone behind a series of words used to gain an understanding of the attitudes, opinions and emotions expressed within an online mention. Now, why exactly should we analyze these sentiments? It's seen that shifts in sentiment on social media have been shown to correlate with shifts in the stock market. Example, the Obama administration used sentiment analysis to gauge public opinion to policy announcements and campaign messages ahead of 2012 presidential election. Let me tell you something from personal experience. The software which I'm about to help you make the one which I made, using that before the 2016 presidential election result, I had analyzed the sentiments of posts that include the word Donald Trump and the post about Hillary Clinton. And after analyzing that, I found that the public is tending towards Donald Trump and there's a high chance that he might win the election. And that was in fact true. He did win the election. So you can see, I can't guarantee 100% that just by analyzing the result, you can predict what's going to happen, but it does send you in the right direction. Let's continue. The ability to quickly understand consumer attitudes and react accordingly is something that Expedia Canada took advantage of when they noticed that there was a steady increase in negative feedback to the music used in one of the television adverts. There are tons of other applications that people have used this in. Uh, let's see analytics in general. Why is it used? We can know what is trending positively or negatively over a period of time and why. Who is being talked about, where and why. What college is being talked about, what topics are being discussed the most. Who is being talked about most positively. What are the best sources for positive exposure, the geographical location of these comments, etc. Now let's move on to the more fun practical part. I hope you have R and R Studio installed. If not, don't worry. Let me tell you briefly from where to install it. And if you have, move a little bit more forward. To install R Studio, just go to rstudio.com. Click on R Studio. Now click on R Studio Desktop. Download button. Now, according to your operating system, click on the appropriate link. I'm using Windows 10, so I'll click on the first installer. Write down canceling the installation since I all I mean download since I already have R Studio. But basically, the exe file will be downloaded. Just launch it and keep clicking next. That is, accept the defaults and you'll be fine. If you want to change any settings, you can. Similarly, to Download R, go to crack.r project R. Don't worry, all the links will be in the description below. Click on download R for Windows. Click on install R for the first time. Click on download R 3.3.2 for Windows. In pretty much the same way, you click on the exe file, keep clicking next and it will be installed. As simple as that. Now that we are done with R and R Studio installation, let's think about Twitter authentication. What is it and why do we need it? For analyzing the sentiment of people, we need tweets. For, uh, for getting tweets, we need to extract it from Twitter. For that, we need an API. And 
to use the API, we need Twitter's permission and that is where authentication comes in. So first of all, you need a Twitter uh, ID. So make sure you have signed up for Twitter. Once you have, let's go to the Twitter developer site. The link is in the description below. Go to my apps. This is an application that I've already created. Just click on create new app. Name the application, write a short description for it. Here you have to write a valid URL as a website. Don't worry, you won't need it later. So I'm just putting the link that I'm going to put down in the description for the code that we'll be writing. You can use the same website or you can use any other valid URL. Callback URL for now, we're keeping it blank. Just to get a slight idea of what it is, what is callback? Callback is a programming practice of sending executable code to another function, routine, or program. On the web, callback URL refers to calling back a web address rather than a bit of code. So for now, just leave it blank and it will be fine. Yes, I have read and agreed to the Twitter development agreement. Click the thumbs up to join the club if you also don't actually read these agreements. And if you do, well, I'm proud of you. Okay, so you go to application settings and here is the consumer key. Now click this new link, manage keys and access stone in a new tab because we will need the URLs that are present here. That's why I wanted you to open it a new tab. Now, you have the consumer key and the consumer secret here. Okay, first you should know that for authentication, there are four major things that will be required in the beginning. The consumer key, the consumer secret, the access token and the access secret. Okay, so here is the consumer key and the consumer secret. Create your access token. Just click on this button. Okay, so you have the access token, the access token secret also now. So using all these four, you can start coding. And the URL that is present here, all the information that will be needed for authentication, you have it now. So now let's open RStudio. Okay. All right. Now, if you want to set this to the working directory, which you'll be using, that is the folder where you'll store all the codes related to the project. That I actually recommend you do this. Then you can use these two commands, get working directory and set working directory. So get WD is get working directory. Presently, I'm in this folder and I want to change it. So change it to whatever you like. For autofilling, you use a tab key. I type DO and then I press tab key. Then there are two possible things, documents or downloads. So I wrote DOC and then tap key, so it auto-filled up. That's just a tip, it's not necessary to use it. Okay, so I've set it to the desired, uh, desired folder. Now if I get the working directory, it is what I set it to be. All right, once we're done with this, let's start writing the program for authentication. You have a new script. So you'll be needing two libraries here, Twitter and R-O-A-U-T-H for authentication. So you need to install it before. For that, install.packages. Twitter, note that the R is capital here and you write it within quotes. Press enter. Use the default zero cloud and click on OK. Once you click on OK, the download will be done. Similarly, OK, I have the same exact command uh, by pressing the up arrow key. So I can just edit it and I don't have to type the whole thing again. Now R-O-A-U-T-H, press OK and it will download it. So these two are downloaded now. You can, now these two are valid. Now you define four variables, consumer key, and then you just copy paste it from here. Whatever is generated, then consumer secret, the access token and the access secret. So for now, I'm going to show you what I've already written.
for simplification. So you have defined the four variables and copy pasted the information on the website. But now you write this command. Why do we do that? Because we need CSCRT.PEM certificate, which is mandatory for Windows for this to be successful. So you can download it from using this command or you can download it manually also. Then you set it up using the four given parameters which we have defined. Then you define a new variable called cred or anything you want it to be. Now I'm using this arrow key uh, for assignment. You can also use equal to, we have no issues with that. Now you're using the same two parameters, consumer key and consumer secret, but the last three parameters are URLs. Let me go back to the web browser. Yes. So the original uh, page that you had in that you had all these URLs, which will be required now. Okay. Yeah, so request URL is the same as request token URL. Access URL is access token URL. AUTH URL is the authorized URL. So simply write these variable names and copy paste the URLs from here. And then you do the handshaking. As simple as that, a very simple code, pretty much just stores the information that was generated. Now you save the file, okay, and then you run it, edit and run all. It is downloading the file. You could have written the commands directly here, but I recommend that you write it in a script first so that you can just run it whenever you want. You don't have to type it again and again. So now the download has been completed. It is setting it up. And now the handshaking part. What it does is it redirects you to a new new URL. Now you have authorize app. Just click on that. A pin is generated. Copy that and paste it here. Done. Authentication is complete. Congratulations. How do you test it? Just use search Twitter. Um, what do you want to search? We can search about any product, anything that is trending. Uh, we can search about a movie. Let's search about Donald Trump. I'm using 150 tweets. You can use as much as 1500 tweets maximum. Now it will search. The more number of tweets we search, obviously the longer time it takes. Okay, there's some error. Okay. There was some server error. It's all right. Once again, again I, ran, I ran it and it was all right. So these are the 150 tweets that have been derived. RT means a retweet, real Donald Trump. Uh, it's the Donald Trump's retweet. Thank you, Florida. My administration has followed two simple rules, buy American and hire American. So all these are there. See, there are some URLs that people write along with their tweets. And there are all this rubbish that has come. Now you'll be like, who will tweet that? What's this? This is basically when people use different languages in the tweet other than English. And this slash XCD half slash XCD, this is actually an emoticon. I'll help you later to, and tell you that how to remove these emoticons and clean the tweets. We'll go to the uh, go and do that in the subsequent video tutorials. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to read, comment and subscribe. Thank you.